Get this, it's been uncovered that a bunch of players on the Iranian women's national soccer team are actually men. They'd been playing covered wearing hijabs and full body covering, so no one really seemed to notice for a while until someone blew the whistle. Now, just to give you a quick little mm -hmm. backstory. Now, soccer is very popular in Iran, like a lot of other countries in the world. And surprisingly, although women aren't allowed to go watch the games at the stadium, they actually surprisingly have a very well-established women's league. So there's a lot of women playing soccer in Iran. Now, back in 2014, The Telegraph reported that they started implementing mandatory gender testing because they found out that a few of the players were undergoing sex changes. They were men. They were in the middle of transitioning as a woman, but they were already playing for the women's soccer team. Now, whether or not a man should be able to have a sex change and play on a women's team, that's we'll get into that a little later. But before that, I want to say an Iranian official very close to the league. His name is Mojtabi Sharifi. He's an Iranian official, and he knows what he's talking about. This is a reputable source. Um, he works a lot with the women's league there. He was quoted as saying eight of the women, eight of the women playing, playing on the national team are playing without having completed their sex change operations. What do you think, Jose? Is this, are you surprised? Because I'm sure a lot of soccer fans in Iran are like, what the hell is going on? I mean, it's definitely a unique situation. It's not surprising, though. We have to remember that Iran is uh, it's the leader in the world yeah. in, when it comes to sex change operations. It's been legal since 1979, right after the revolution. Khomeini said, I think this is, this is something that I agree with, and it's right. allowed. So it's so much more acceptable to change your sex than to be gay in, in Iran. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to your question. We will see this, this debate a lot more as we see transgender athletes competing as women more and more and the acceptance of transgender uh, individuals in this society. We'll have to have this debate and say, if it really matters, do, do, are we still stuck in this time where we believe that women are less physically skilled than men or that men have a, an advantage, if you will, just a genetical advantage? I think that We've seen a lot of, of girls competing that could put that to test, that yeah, theory that hey. men are better than women. But at the end, there are rules in the game yeah. stay right now, and maybe it's not fair. Yeah. But at the same time, something that we do have to take in account is the fact that transitioning from men to women is not a, is not a switch that you just can flip and out that you're a woman. It's a process, it's a long process, it involves therapy, like hormonal therapy, Reass, you know, sex reassign, reassignment mm -hmm. uh, surgeries and recovery. So it's not surprising that many of them had to participate in the national team for a long time without completing the process, not necessarily meaning that they were trying to cheat the system, but it opens definitely the doubt to see if the Iran, Iran's government, because it's very involved with the, the soccer team, might be taking advantage a little bit just to make the country look good. No. Uh, completely agree with you. Now, first off, I want to say, Iran as a country is not very unique in the fact that they discriminate against homosexuals. Unfortunately, a lot of countries around the world do. But they are unique in the fact that while they discriminate against homosexuals, they're still very open to sex change. Because I feel uh, in Iran, a lot of people hold that sentiment like, well, we'd rather you just trans transition into a woman and become a woman rather than being a man who's pretending to be a woman. That's, mm -hmm. that's how they see it. So it's un unique in that respect. And I think that's why we see this issue in Iran and not in other countries. Now, to the hypocrisy point that you made. I completely agree with you. They might use transgenders and men who are gay to play on the soccer team of the women knowing that they're men so that it boosts the image of Iran and makes the women's national team look better. Meanwhile, outside of the, f uh, outside of the stadium, off the field, they'll be discriminated against and cracked down by the government. So I think that in itself is a point to be made. A last, my last point before we go though, you mentioned whether, you know, physically, genetically, are men, you know, fit, more fit, better at sports than women? Maybe this proves the point that they're not, because we see the U.S. women's soccer team blows everybody out of the water. We're so, we're so good. We beat teams all the time like Iran. Now, if a country like Iran isn't winning and they have a bunch of guys on their team, what does that say? It doesn't mean anything, really. It doesn't it really mean, much, doesn't mean doesn't I don't think I don't believe that there, there's any, any type of advantage. What I do believe is the way things are being run in the Iran's national female soccer team are completely wrong when you have, and we have to remember, we reported on this story not too long ago, when you have the captain of the players, a female <laughs> captain, that has no authority to decide if she's gonna go to the travel because her husband is saying you can't travel. In Iran, the husband have authority over the women to decide if they're gonna engage in international travel. They have to actually have a signed paper from their husband. And the captain of the team, the best player, the historical best player of the female Iran's team, soccer team, can't travel to the Asian Cups, can't travel to the World Qualifiers, to the World Cup Qualifiers, because she's not allowed. But at the same time, the 
officials might be using this loophole to try to beat the, exactly. the system and try to break the rules. And it's sad to see if that was the case uh, when they have really, really good players that could be representing the country, but they can't because their husbands are not letting them go. Yeah, Saudi Arabia as well has that same exact law that women need to get this like hall pass sort of thing signed, permission from their husband just to travel. Well, we want to know what you guys think in the comments below about transgender pl players playing f secretly undercover for the Iranian women's national team. Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the Live TV for more.